Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you have been having a wonderful and blessed Thursday. Welcome back to my channel, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining me here this afternoon. Here's your daily news report and fourth stimulus check update. A number of states are sending out stimulus payments to their residents. In this video, I will be going over how you can receive more assistance from your state, as well as whether you are protected under the new federal eviction ban. This coming Friday, I will be announcing more winners of my Amazon gift card giveaway. Please enter the giveaway. What you need to do is subscribe to my channel, like this video, and also leave a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone. The Centers for Disease Control's original eviction moratorium, which had been in effect since September, expired on July 31st, leaving more than 11 million Americans who continue to be behind on their rent at risk. Three days later, the health agency announced a new ban that will be in effect for another 60 days in areas where rates still remain high. The new order covers renters in areas experiencing substantial and high levels. On the CDC's website, you can check the level where you live in. Some 80% of counties in the country should be covered. You will lose the protection if your county has 14 consecutive days that fall below those crisis levels. And to be eligible, you will also have to meet the requirements of the former eviction ban, such as having earned less than $99,000 in 2020 or in 2021. In addition, you need to attest that you have experienced a financial hardship during this crisis, that you have applied for rental assistance, and that an eviction could lead you to becoming homeless or needing to double up with others. Now you should apply for rental assistance as soon as possible. Congress has allocated more than $45 billion in rental assistance to address the crisis, and only a sliver of the money has been spent so far. If you are approved for the relief, you could get up to 18 months of rent covered. A new report from the bankingrates.com has identified nine U.S. states where residents will receive stimulus checks to deal with the ongoing crisis. The stimulus checks come in addition to the federal stimulus checks that were sent out by the Trump administration back in 2020 and the Biden administration in 2021. These checks are often established by state laws. Okay, everybody, thanks for being here, and I'm proud to be joined by Senators Durbin, Murray, and Stabenow. Now, we just had another great caucus meeting. And first, today is the six-month anniversary. Can we have it quiet, please? Today is the six-month anniversary of the Senate Democratic majority. As busy as the last six months have been, and it's been a Senate of major, major accomplishment already, the Senate Democrats are keeping our foot on the gas pedal. Our caucus is eager to get to work to pass on a big, bold infrastructure package that will rocket fuel our economy and propel our country forward into the 21st century, that will help the middle class stay in the middle class, that will help people struggling to get into the middle class having an easier path to get there. And so, for weeks, I have said we have a busy summer with a long to-do list. You've all heard me say that a while back, that July was going to be very busy. And I know both sides are working very hard to turn the bipartisan infrastructure framework into final legislation. We know that. But they've been working on this bipartisan framework for more than a month already. And it's time to begin the debate. So tomorrow, Senate, the Senate will take the first procedural vote on a shell bill, merely a vehicle. Some people, reporters came over to me, they don't understand it. This is how we work in the Senate. We put a shell bill, it's actually a House bill, because you need a bill from the House if you're dealing with fiscal consequences, on the floor. And you move to proceed and then you build on it. No one's voting on anything except to move forward on a, on a bipartisan bill tomorrow. And um, it's not an, this is not a deadline that determines every final detail of the bill, not close to it. The state of California is sending out a stimulus check to its residents. These checks will either be $500 or $600 depending on income. The state of Colorado will send 375 people to its residents who received at least one unemployment payment from March 15, 2020 to October 24, 2020. The state of Maryland will send $500 stimulus payments to its residents and $300 for individual taxpayers who filed for the earned income tax credit within the state. 
the state of New Mexico will distribute $5 million to all those who did not qualify for the federal stimulus checks, and this is according to KQRE. The state of Florida was poised to distribute $1,000 checks to teachers and administrators. Some teachers have not received the bonuses yet. The state of Georgia will send $1,000 checks to all full-time teachers and administration. Part-time teachers will get $500 stimulus checks. The state of Michigan has already sent out $500 stimulus checks to all their teachers. And the state of Tennessee plans to send out $1,000 checks to teachers instead of giving them 2% raises. Part-time teachers there will receive a $500 check. Some districts in the state of Texas are increasing pay for teachers or giving them bonuses. For example, the city of Irving, Texas is giving teachers a $2,000 bonus payment. I truly hope that many of you will be able to receive an extra stimulus check from your state this month. The Senate is slowly inching closer to a final vote on the roughly $1 trillion bipartisan infrastructure bill as the debate on amendments to the proposal continues and Republicans urge their Democratic colleagues not to move too quickly. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer said that the Senate has so far considered eight amendments to the plan, which proposed $550 billion in new spending to revitalize the nation's physical infrastructure. The upper chamber is poised to consider another substantial tranche of amendments, though an agreement on the total number of amendments to weigh has not yet been reached. In remarks on the Senate floor, Chuck Schumer said, The Senate is moving full steam ahead on the bipartisan infrastructure bill. They are making great progress on amendments, and we are going to make further progress very soon. It is still unclear when Chuck Schumer will move to bring the amendment process to a close. But Republicans on Tuesday urged him not to act too fast, or he would risk losing their support for ending debate, which requires 60 votes. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said, This is an extremely important bipartisan bill. There is an excellent chance it will be a bipartisan success story for the country. To try to truncate the amendment process on something of this magnitude, I think, is a mistake. Mitch McConnell said senators know they will be in Washington next week to take up a separate $3.5 trillion budget resolution, which provides the blueprint for broader spending package, and advised Chuck Schumer that the slow and steady wins the race. While some of the Senate negotiators said Sunday they hope to pass the measure by the end of this week, those plans appear derailed. More than 300 amendments to the bipartisan bill have been filed as of midday Wednesday though not all will get a vote. Chuck Schumer urged Republicans and Democrats to work together on the amendment process and reiterated that senators would remain in Washington until they pass both the bipartisan bill and budget resolution. So that's the end of the video, everyone, for this afternoon. I hope you found some information helpful. Remember that this Friday, I will be announcing three winners of this week's Amazon gift card giveaway. Please enter the giveaway by subscribing to my channel, liking this video, and also leaving a comment below. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a wonderful and blessed Thursday.